Hey guys and welcome back to part two of our web services tutorial. Today we're going to be covering the code behind the Windows Forms that we've created or as we called it the test harness. Uh, first thing we're going to be doing is concentrating on the constructor. Oh excuse me please. Um, with the constructor we wish to pre-populate our combo boxes so our countries and our cities combo box. Um, with country and cities so that basically prepares our form for us for use uh, in selecting the uh, respective uh, respective cities to obtain its weather so without further ado what we'll do is we'll right click on our form and we will select review code or press F7 so the first thing we are presented with um, with the code behind the form is the namespace area, the forms class, and the constructor within the form. As you can see, the constructor's name is form1, which isn't very original, so we will refactor that and rename that to weather, weather form, or form weather, form weather, apply, just to make life a little bit uh, more convenient for us. So what's the first thing we need to do here? Well I would suggest the first thing we do is actually add the reference to our service, our, our web service. Okay so what you need to do is to go over to your Solutions Explorer pane over on the far right here and right click on your project, go down to the add menu item and select service reference. And uh, with the service reference dialog box open, you see we really have two options here. We have the address entry field where we would type in the address of our web service. And at the bottom of uh, the panel, we have the namespace for the web service. So we are gonna call our service reference. And we are going to go over to the website which is containing the web service. And we are going to select the entire service name, control C to copy that and then we are going to paste that into the address bar and then press go that's gone off as you can see and grab the weather, weather service and then here you can see the weather soap that we will be using highlighting the weather soap you can see the two methods that we are going to be consuming get weather and get set uh, get cities by country okay so click OK wait a few seconds and you will see that's actually added um, service model reference to the references list and also it's added the service reference to a service reference folder within our project. So first things first we need to actually add a reference to the new namespace so uh, if you can remember the namespace was weather surface dot service reference So that's what we will be declaring up here using weather service dot service reference semicolon to terminate this line and uh, now we have that we can actually access the methods within the uh, service reference okay so now we need to uh, do what's called adding a binding okay so the binding will bind our application to the web service uh, the basic HTTP binding object isn't visible at the moment because we, um, have, uh, we are missing a using statement. However, if you uh, click in the object name itself, um, which is uh, missing the using uh, library, go down and you'll notice that you have a little drop down list. Drop it down and select the using service model, using system service model. And you can see now that that's actually been declared and we can use that. The line below that, the binding max received message size set to uh, 2 million. Um, the reason why we've done this is that the data that we are going to request back from the web service, the um, country list and cities list is quite large. It's greater than 65,000 bytes. So the uh, maximum default allowable message size for our binding is 65,000. So um, we need to increase the size of that. So uh, we've done that by uh, increasing the max uh, message size to 2 million. 
the next thing we need to do is add what's called an endpoint address, which is the address that we are going to be targeting for our web service. There we go. Okay, so you declare that with the endpoint address object. Give it a name. I've called mine address conveniently. And uh, the parameter that you pass into this object, into its constructor, is the um, actual URL from the web service, uh, which we copied earlier, which is the HTTP colon slash slash www.webservicex.com forward slash global weather dot ASMX. So uh, following this, we need to actually uh, create our SOAP client or instantiate our SOAP client so we are then able to um, access the, uh, the um, two methods through the uh, SOAP service. Okay, so paste that in here and you'll see now that we have got a new object type global weather SOAP client. The global weather, sorry, global weather SOAP client actually resides, um, like we say, within inside of the service reference. If you double click the service reference and go back to the object browser, select the uh, namespace for the weather service service reference, drop that down. In here, you'll see you have a global weather SOAP client object, uh, and selecting that over here in the right panel for the methods and properties, you will see that you've got the get cities by country and get weather methods okay so obviously we need to be able to uh, ac access those through um, the weather service sorry the uh, global weather service client so we do that by declaring this object we're creating this object type here and we've given it a name GWSC uh, which is just short for global weather service client and into this we pass our binding which we created up here so we can bind it to our endpoint and to uh, the address of our endpoint So really, that now gives us our connection to our endpoint, to the uh, to the web server. So all that's left to do now is start calling the uh, the methods on the service and uh, processing the data, which comes back in the response. So let's do a query on the get cities by country now. Get cities by country. If you was to uh, call that method and not pass in any parameters, what is returned is the entire list of countries and cities. So uh, go back to your browser with the web service in it, and uh, in the two methods that you see, if you click on the first method, the get cities by country. Okay, it gives you the option here to test it, and you can type in a country by name. But if you don't type in a country by name and just invoke it, give it a few seconds, you'll see that you've got everything back. All the countries, all the cities. Okay, so we are going to do that in our application to pre-populate our drop-down dialog box with countries and cities. Okay, now, We'll give it a var type at the moment, and it's going to return a object back. The object um, it's going to return back will look like this. Um, it's a bit like an XML document, okay? So you're going to see a new data set, opening tag, and right at the bottom here you'll see a new data set, closing tag. And then inside that we have got a bunch of table objects, okay? So table, opening tag table closing tag and within inside the table object we have a country and a city okay so we are going to get an array back of tables um, <coughs> and that is then going to be stored inside of cities of type var so let's put a breakpoint down here on the end of our um, constructor and execute this and let's see what happens okay so we run it Give it a couple of seconds. We hit the breakpoint and then we'll hover over cities. And you can see here in the pop up um, tip for cities, uh, the watch for cities, that we actually have got some data in there. And if we go out of our little spyglass and drop it down and select HTML visualizer, you will see in the window that pops up countries and cities. So we know that up to this point everything is working just hunky dory. Okay, so what we want to do is to um, 
deserialize this uh, this object or these objects into uh, a C sharp object so that we can um, perform some operations on that object and extract the countries and the cities at will um, and populate the dialogues with that. So the process um, of doing that is uh, known as deserialization. So we're going to be deserializing this object. So uh, Oh, it's data so let's go back and pop it up again but this time what we're going to do is we're going to look at it in the text visualizer and you can see a bit clearer now um, what's going on so there's your data set and then here's your tables so we want an object of type for example data set and inside that we are going to have uh, an object of type table and inside that we'll have two properties one for country and one for city and then that will allow us to iterate over the data set each table and extract the countries uh, and the cities at will. Well, that's the theory anyway, so uh, let's give that a, a go. Um, it looks like half of you have fallen asleep. I'm not surprised after 10 minutes of listening to me rounding on, so I think it's probably prudent for me to shut this video down, part two, and uh, continue with um, the deserialization process in part three. So. I look forward to seeing you in part three, guys. Take care. Bye for now.